Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as, as we do every Tuesday at the 3.30 hour. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, everything seems to be okay here. Uh, we sold our long position. I got an indicator that um, I've sent you over a couple of charts. I don't know how many we'll be able to get through. No, I know uh, you got you got you you're letting us in on something new. Let's take a the, take a look at that. Is that the 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 which one you want to start with? All right, chart one. Yeah. Um, and it's the SPX tilt ratio. Uh, tilt is the uh, twenty-year Treasury yes, bond. Yes, I know. And, okay. And, uh, so anyhow, I, I watch what that ratio does, and it really markets um, they, they're balanced. If they get out of balance, they come back to the norm, and yes. that's either up or down. Uh, so when this ratio gets out of balance, you know the RS well on the upside, the RSI gets above seventy. Normally, you got a kind of a short-term top. Uh, this is on the ratio, the RSI for the SPX TLT ratio. Yes. And so I, uh, you can go back further, but I marked the times. Uh, the second window up from the bottom is the daily S and PX. Yep. And I marked the times when the uh, RSI of the SPX uh, TLT ratio got above seventy. Okay. And so it does. Uh, it does it pretty well. You know, job of, of picking out just short term highs or not long term highs. But that's what I'm kind of looking for here. I, I'm thinking we're we're entering into some sort of a high area, and the VIX is not getting a lot of information. It's relatively staying low, and it's not doing any great divergences, uh, which is kind of a, my main tool. Yes. So this is a little bit shorter term time frame. But the RSI when I printed this uh, chart this morning was. Uh, I was 82. Okay. And that's pretty darn high. So what that says to me, uh, at least on the SPX, the upside is limited here. Because okay. you never get the RSI up to 90. It, you know, between 70 and 80, it usually kind of peaks out. And the um, and you start getting a, at least a sideways move, not a, a short-term top yes. on the SPX. So... Well, it's kind of um, what you, we've been doing here for a bit. I mean, you thought we were going to flip around into consolidation. It looks like we've just been going sideways at highs, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so far, we're, yeah, this chart suggests, like, the upside's limited. Um, so I guess we could move sideways. So out of two, three, uh, you know, three things can happen. You can either go up sideways or down. Yes. Well, this kind of takes uh, this uh, the upside in my opinion, out, out of the equation. Can I'm we move sideways? Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I mean, I just, it's kind of a chart that I, I watch when the short-term picture gets a little fuzzy. I kind of look at this, see what it says. This is one of and these you have says, in your back pocket. I'm glad we cut it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 so, so anyhow, so let's actually flip back to uh, chart number two. Okay. And, and this, uh, Anyhow, the the big chart in the middle there is the VIX. Yes. And if you notice the VIX since basically mid June, it's pretty much going sideways, and the SPX is going up. So there's divergence, and the top window is the SPX VIX ratio. Um, so it 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 kind of smooths out things a little better, so you don't, you don't see all this jittery stuff going on. Right. And it's kind of moved sideways. It did kind of make a higher high, but barely. Here a, a week or so ago, but it's not getting real bearish. I mean, it can move sideways, I guess, forever, and the SPs could still move up. But what you want to happen for a bearish sign is the VIX to move up, and while the S and P's is moving up, and that's what usually happens right. at tops. Um, the S and P's moving up, and the VIX is still kind of moving sideways, so it leans bearish, but not. You know, I wouldn't bet on. Put it this way. Uh, I wouldn't bet a short here, even though it may work out. No, I'm with uh, you. Until it's, it's, that VIX starts going up along with the S and P's, then uh, then I'd get uh, start looking a little bit more bearish. So yeah, and it's getting uh, through this yeah. window dressing too, probably right. You know, beginning of the month. It's yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, that's a good point. You know, it's uh, sometimes these you know tops they ring a bell at the bottom, and yes. everything just blows out, and you get a bottom and reverses and. And if you're lucky to buy into that bottom, you know, because a lot of times it never looks back. Right. On tops, it's just almost the opposite. They go up there and they make a high, they make a higher high. They and, do. 
and sometimes these tops can take weeks to form. No, no doubt. And, there's, uh, there's, there's no doubt and, about that, man. It's just pretty wild when you think about it, right? Yeah, stay right there, Tim. We're going to take a short break, right. and then we're going to come right back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now. Uh, trading uh, down, uh, trading up 52. Nasdaq is down 47. S and P's are up 12. You can contact Tim every trading day, folks, at Ord O R D dash Oracle O R C L E dot com. That's Ord dash Oracle dot com. Tim and I are going to become right back, folks. Stay right there. Welcome back, folks. Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 33. Nasdaq's down 56. S and P's are up 15 and a half. We're talking with Tim, and the chart that I have up right now, Tim, is the uh, VIX and the SPY. Right. Actually, I wanted to talk about uh, last Thursday, we had a uh, bearish engulfing pattern drawn uh, on the um, SPYs. In other words, uh, you engulfed about, uh, it looks like about three or four of the previous days. It's a bearish candlestick pattern. Yes. And if, if you notice, you had kind of high volume that day, at least on the... Um, yep. Uh, SPYs, and what I found out over the years, a lot, of, you know, high volume highs and actually high volume lows, uh, majority of the time, not hundred percent of the time, but majority of the time are tested. Right. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking there's a good chance we could test last Thursday's high. Right. And if we test last Thursday's high, and, you, and, you, and the VIX goes up with it, uh, then that could really line up for a decent uh, sell signal. I mean, reliable. I'm not saying the market's going to cry to the No, floor. no, no, which is Go sweet. No, I get it. I mean, because you remember those, uh, in, uh, what is those, inverted hammers? The um, They love getting tested, man. They love getting tested after it, you get an inverted hammer at the top, and then it comes down, then it comes back up, especially when it has volume in it. I know. I can see that. Right. That, that high volume high at 90, 95, 92 million. And we, you can yeah. go all the way back. I can go back six, well, at 104 million, let's see, that was in, uh, what was that, June? Yeah, June, 104 million. The, the, the last couple highs had some good volume, but we hadn't had something like that for a long time, man. Yeah, interesting. Right. Yeah. No doubt. So, so I'm thinking, you know, the market, you know, if you look in that interday stuff here, uh, yesterday the trend closed at 1.25. Anything above 1.2 short term bullish. And as we're talking here, I got a trend of uh, 1.2. So you got a couple of days of bullish trend, you know, it's, it's building kind of a, uh, a little bit of energy, I guess. You little, It's a little bit of panic here, not a lot. You know, okay. we're at a high. And and uh, so I, I'm thinking there's a good chance we possibly test that last Thursday's high. And that's where the, the rubber meets the road, I guess. Yes. Either we bust through that, which I don't think we, I mean, we may close above it. But anyhow, you know, that's where I'm, I'm thinking that's the key area, which is rump uh, on the SPX, I think it's 4607. So right around that 4600 area a little, uh, 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 is a real key area, which is also the highs of, two th or, uh, of February, March, and April of 2022. That's where those highs lie. Right. So there's quite a bit of stuff right there that um, may may uh, line up pretty well. You know, when we hit it, I don't know. You know, a lot of times these signals come on Fridays, I found out. So they make your whole weekend miserable because you're going to, <laughs> if you're going to be right or wrong come Monday. So, I love it. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's, so, you want to go to the next shot? Yeah, we can. Okay. We can. So um, this, they're actually, the, chart three and four are actually the same, the same chart. And uh, let me. There's just kind of a, re a little review here. This is the, uh, um, it's, yeah, it's a 50 day average. You know, the bottom window is what I'm looking at, which is, which is a 50 day average, right, of the up down volume percent. So it, it's a little bit a longer term indicator. It's not like that. We've been looking at the 18 day average of the up down volume advanced client indicators, which is on a buy signal on the short term. This is a bigger, longer term indicator. And it looks like about June of this year, I, I didn't write down the date. Anyhow, when that indicator, uh, up down volume of advanced client gets below minus 20, use your exhaustion move to the downside. And if your exhaustion move downside, in other words, you're, you're blowing out, uh, to the downside and to the bottom. And every time we get down to minus 20, uh, this chart goes back to 2010, it went back up to plus 20. Right. I did it every time. 
And so we're still below, uh, or we did hit below minus 20, but so far we have not hit above, actually it's, uh, it, excuse me, it's above minus 12, or plus 12. If you get a buy signal, it's below minus 20. Yep. And a sell signal uh, gets above plus 12. And so the buy signals are all circled in blue, and the red circles are all, uh, the sell signals are all circled in red. And so every time you got a blue circle, you went up into a red circle at yes. some point. So that's what we're kind of looking for. And we're around minus two right now, so we've got quite a ways to go. I know it's pretty. 12. It's pretty cool, Tim, that we we got through. We made it through last Thursday because last Thursday was a rough day in the gold market, right? And then today, yeah. you know, last Thursday, what happened is that the you know we went from twenty twenty two to nineteen eighty one. And, you know, today we went to from, you know, bottom line is that we went from, what, uh, 2004 to 1978. We're testing last Thursdays. And we are, the cool thing is that you're actually testing Thursdays and uh, the 12th of July, you know. So it's kind of cool that that um, ratio is still holding up with a couple tough days in here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the market's going to hold up here. Right. Uh, you know, we're, right. we're we're just screwing around building, you know, building some energy for the next move. But uh, so, you know, this gave a, we should actually get to plus 12 at some point between now and October is what I'm thinking. Right. But, you know, it, it gave a, a you know, a, a good uh, buy signal. And in my opinion, on an airman scale, we're still on a buy signal. Yes. Now, if you flip to the, the next chart, which is chart four. OK. Now, you know, this is the same chart. And it's just, it's everything's same about it. Well, what I did notice uh, on the bottom window there, to really have strong uptrends, uh, the needs to stay above uh, zero. Okay. And right now we're about we're right at zero minus two on this indicator. I see. I see. And all see. the blue areas are times when those indicators stayed above zero. Okay. So zero is when the strong part of the rally begins. Yep. So. Uh, even though we bounced here a little bit, the strongest part, in my opinion, still lies in front of us. Right. Because when those, because uh, when the uh, uh, advance or the up down volume, when actually even the advance decline get above zero, that strength in the market. That's saying more stocks are going up on heavier volume. That's what that says. And Tim, and so is that though, bottom on a daily? Yeah, these are on daily. Cool. Okay, so I can see it. So last Thursday, you were below it. Friday, above it. You jumped above it yesterday. You come below it today. Cool. I got it. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, well, this this is on a daily chart. They only update this, so we don't know if this is going to be above minus two today. Uh, yeah, this is no, a, it's going to be a below daily it probably, chart. Right? Yeah. I'm not, not sure what what you're looking at here. Are we looking at the... Um, I was looking at the bottom, bottom chart. So the bottom chart looks like it's going to be below it again today. But when we what we had done is that yesterday we jumped above it, which would make sense. Was it yesterday? Hold on one second. Let me look at this. No, nah, it, it's... Yeah. Um, this is a daily chart. So... Uh, well, I can see... Was a, it, wasn't it above it yesterday? No. Where the circle is? No. No? no? Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, it's still below it, but barely. I see. You know, the the what, what I wanted to point out here is when those that went uh, well, I'll have, have shaded there is all bl in blue. Yes. And and that's when the parse the strongest part of the rally begins when those two indicators are above zero. They stay so above. I think that I get still it. lies in front of us. Last month it was there. I know. I hear your your radio. Or your I music, get it. So. Well, listen. This is always a pleasure. I look forward to speaking to you on Thursday, Tim. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.